How's it going YouTube? Chris here with My Home Theater. Got a brand new video for you today. Hope everybody's having a good week. Uh, asked a question on my last video, some things that people would like to see for me do videos on. And uh, someone mentioned about doing something on amps and, and wiring up speakers and stuff. So I've got a center channel speaker and an amp behind me. Uh, and I would like to kind of just kind of go over my thoughts on by wire and by amping and and maybe even bridging an amp. Uh, I've tried uh, pretty much all of it, and uh, there's benefits to to some of it. Some I, I just I don't see any benefit to. But uh, uh, let's go ahead and cover that uh, right now. Uh, what you see here is I, like I said I got a I got a center channel speaker here. And uh, this center channel is, is Polk Audio CSI A6, and it is capable of being bi-amped. And uh, I have bi-amped this speaker, and uh, I bi-amped it, and then I had it bridged, uh, amp bridged on it. Uh, but we, we will cover that in just a second. From what I see, uh, what I've read, and what I've uh, looked at, uh, bi-wiring, uh, bi-wiring, basically what you would do is you would take these these uh, the little brass fittings out here that go from one connector to the other and connect them together. And you would get a, uh, you can make your own, but what it would be is uh, some, of the, some of the speaker wires that I've seen that had the little uh, connectors that go up under here and you would tighten that down. Or you can just push the wire in there and tighten it down like you normally would. And then you could connect your speaker wires just, just like that up here. And they would, now I wish I had one made up to kind of show you, but they would connect down here and then you would connect your others from here to the amp. So that's by wire. Basically, you just replacing this with a wire is from what I've gathered. Uh, the big debate is, does it make a difference? I, I don't really know. Uh, I haven't really tried that. I've always kept these connectors on unless I have uh, by amped them. Now I have uh, by amped my speakers, I have by amp this uh, particular channel, center channel. I have done, I had some monitor 70s that I had by amp, and what I did is I took them off. And what you would do is you come down to your amp and uh, you just plug whatever channels you're gonna use. This is an old Kenwood six channel amp. So you would plug them into here and then you would find your corresponding place down here and then you would get into here and then that's for for one you would actually take these out your brass fittings out and then you will come along and you will find your other channel and you will come up here on your other binding post and there you go and what you're doing like this amp is only 100 watts per channel and so what you're doing is you're putting 100 watts onto this post and you're putting 100 watts on that post. Now, the higher the wattage, the better it is. This center channel will handle, I think it's 250 watts. So I basically can put 250 watts onto this post and 250 watts onto this post. Now what it's gonna do, it's gonna run in through the internal crossover that's in here. Now I'm trying to, I don't know exactly how they got it wired up, uh, this has a two six two six and a half and a, and a tweeter. So one of these binding posts may be running the tweeter and the other binding post may be running two, the two mid-range speakers. I know on the uh, monitor 70s that I had, that's basically how it was. One binding post ran the tweeter and the other binding post ran all the other speakers. I think there was like four, four or five in there. I can't exactly remember right off hand. Uh, so, but it all went through the crossover. So it would handle any kind of power that you put on it. And uh, is that a benefit? It could be. Uh, I know you can also bridge, this amp won't bridge because it's a six channel, this particular one won't. Uh, but if you wanted to bridge an amp, then basically what you would do is you would, however you uh, amp would do it, some of them do, uh, the other Kenwood that I got is a two channel amp. And I wish I had it down here to really show, uh, but it would have a, sometimes you use both negatives, sometimes you use a positive and negative off a of, off of different terminal. And then you would just come up here and you would 
plug them in here just, just like that. You can put your binding post back on or you can put your wires on, buy wire them, however, however you want to do it to bridge it. Now, like I said before, if you, if you buy amped with this amp, you're pushing 100 watts into each terminal. So each set of corresponding speakers, your mids is going to get 100 watts, your center is going to, your tweeter is going to get 100 watts. Now that's pretty, pretty decent power. Okay, now let's just say this amp would bridge 210 watts. So now you're getting 210 watts on both terminal, terminal that spread out over all three speakers. Now I've tried both on my setups that I have behind my screen. Now I haven't tried it since I've built all this, but I have tried it before. And I wish I had some measurements that I could tell you uh, at a certain volume, did it have more of an output? Did it give more clarity? I, 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 real, I will run some more tests uh, at some time and I will try to do a follow-up video to this. Uh, that, so there could be a benefit to buy amping if you have the money uh, to be able to do it. Yeah, I, I would suggest doing it. It would cost you know, a whole, a whole lot more than just buying a higher wattage amp. Uh, I know my speakers behind the screen up there, they handle 500 watts per channel. So, you know, how much money do I have to spend to buy amp three speakers at 500 watts? And that will basically be six channels at 500 watts. And that, that, that would cost a lot of money, but I could see where it would be, it would be a benefit. It would definitely sound good. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buy a three channel amp, 450 watts into eight ohms, and it's going to handle all three speakers. Now that is the, the lesser alternative. So is there a benefit to buy amping? I, I think there could be. I think there could be. Is there a benefit to uh, running amps bridged? Hey, there could be more power. Uh, that's the easier way. Uh, buy wiring. I don't know. I read some articles. Uh, audio files say you could get a little bit clearer sound and stuff like that. I mean, it, it, I mean, you could if you make your own cables. I mean, that would be wonderful if you wanted to do that by wire. I don't, I don't know that there's a benefit. I don't know, but I mean, you know, you can do it. You can get rid of those little brass uh, plates in there, and you can make your own wires and buy wire. I, I mean, that would be fine. Uh, by amping, uh, I think there would be a real good uh, benefit to that. Uh, like I say, if you got the money to do that, that'd be wonderful. And that may be something I look in later on, but uh, right now I'm, I'm gonna run what I got. But I hope this video was informative. Uh, I, I, I know I probably left a lot of, a lot of more questions than I answered, but, uh, but that is what I have run into in the past. I have bi-amped, I have run bridge. I'm actually running my, my amps bridge now. Uh, if you got the equipment and you got the money, buy amping, I think would be uh, the best alternative. You get more power to your speakers, uh, to each terminal. If your speakers can handle it, that'd be great. That'd be great. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video. And uh, man, if you like, subscribe, share, and uh, we'll see you again real soon.